after. Midnight. There's that clap. Are you, are you picking up everything good? Yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah. Weird. Cool, cool, cool. Um, well, welcome back to Just After Midnight. Woo! <laughs> yeah, it's only been like two weeks. <laughs> yeah, something like that. Maybe three, dude. No, it's been two. Has it only been two? Or are we just going to say that? <laughs> I, think <it's, laughs> I think it's been two. Um, yeah, I mean, you know, we had to move into a new functional space. Yeah. So. Yeah, we took a week off for that, but we're here, and we have our first guest in a while. Boom, first guest in the new studio, too. That's yeah. a good word. We got uh, Mr. Alex Noriega here. Yes, sir. Thank God you said it, because yeah, I, I, I wouldn't have got it. Yeah, and I wouldn't have got it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's, it's a tricky one. It, it's a hard name, but it's okay, because he's one of the most talented local musicians, in, in my opinion. You Don't you have like an Thank online you. show that you do, too? Or were you posting like video sessions of yeah. what, what were those sessions called? I thought there was like a specific the Scarlet. Oh, the Scarlet session. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, wa yeah I watched some of that. Yeah. Oh, well, thank you. Pretty wicked, man. Yeah, that was so much fun. Um, Red actually helped me record that. Yeah. Oh yeah. 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 That's why you showed them to me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Humble brag. Sh shameless yeah. plug. Yeah. <laughs> Definitely a little monkey bunny in there, just being like, hey, check this out, is it cool? The video work, huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Tell me what you notice about Hire it the most. Me. Not the music, the video work. <laughs> yeah, no, it's okay. Um, <laughs> so there was that, but then there was also the laundry room sessions. Yes. The video that you had out. Yeah, yeah that was so cool. That, um, that was for your album release for like a crazy, <laughs> crazy record cycle. Yes. It is very not normal. Oh my goodness. That was quite, quite frustrating. Yeah, so I wrote that record and recorded most of it in 2019, and then initially had plans to release it in 2020. Yeah, three guesses um, what happened there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> in 2020? Yeah. Yeah. Yes, yes. So I had a bunch of shows lined up. Um, God, I've been, you know. Um, <laughs> I don't know what that is, but uh, <laughs> life got busy, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> the government shut down. No big yeah. deal. You know. No, no, that really sucked though, because I had all these shows lined up and I was I was gonna have like a like my first mini tour for like uh, all, all my songs. Um, and like every booker that I was working with was being like surprisingly like open and, and I was like, Okay, cool, yeah, like, this is great, this is gonna happen, I'm gonna release this in twenty twenty and then the world shut down and I was like, Well, I've already done one online release. Yeah. And I didn't want to do that again. Yeah. So I decided to save it and then and then that, yeah, turn into the laundry room and, and then like all the, the scrub sessions. Well did some good stuff come from saving it? It's like it's crazy. Sometimes you think you're ready for it to be released and then you end up holding on to it a little longer and maybe you make some adjustments, make some tweaks. Yeah, I mean so I guess pros and cons, like the, the pro is that it got a lot more play and I think that's because I got to play it out live and I waited. Um, yeah. Because again, my, my first record, I, I did not perform it at all. Uh, I just did entirely online and, and, and tried to do like my own kind of grassroots um, marketing campaign uh, and, and just keep it online. It's hard, man. Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, was actually very inspired by it, but I was listening to a lot of the gorillas yeah. uh, back then. And so that, that definitely comes across in the record, but also I was just like, I mean, they, they did the online thing. Let's, let's just try it. True. Yeah. Um, and for a first record, like, like you gotta, you gotta start somewhere and then right. you gotta grow. Um, yeah. so yeah, no, that, that was cool. Um, that I got to play it live. I think it got more play, um, in, you know, more of an audience uh, actually checked it out because it's, there's no easier way to get someone to listen to music. Um, than playing the show live and like you really killing it live and, and you give it justice live and you go hey after this if you're interested check it out you know yeah. online there's constantly just you know everyone is just absolutely amazing online and always doing their art so like the average person just has so much to pick that it's it's hard for them to yeah. capture but if you can create a moment with them right and, and you can play and like one of my songs i wrote specifically uh it's kind of funny everyone thinks it's uh, a love song it's called you and me um it's a good one. But uh, You and Me is actually written about um, my, my first mini tour that I did, um, where You and Me, You is the, is the crowd that I'm playing for. Gotcha. That's so I wrote the song specifically for like the crowd to have participation in it. Oh, that's pretty so cool. So that's why like, I, I tell everyone uh, at the beginning of every, every show, and, and thankfully um, 
I was telling you earlier that, that I've, I've gotten to play a lot more shows on campus. People are coming to, to the shows knowing the words now, which is cool. That is so but, cool. Um, yeah, I give them the, the chorus before we actually start the song, and I tell them to clap along, and it's in a 6-8, and it's yeah. kind of fun, because some people can't clap along in 6-8. Yep. <laughs> that, that's just kind of a part of the magic. Um, yeah. <laughs> so, you know, it, if you do that and, and you get people to get along, you know, how much more likely are they going to check something right. out versus a post? Well, everybody loves interactive. Yeah. So, you know, it really, yeah. really makes it inclusive. Plus, man, the, a beautiful thing about playing live is whenever you're passionate about it, it makes other people want to be involved. Yeah. It yeah. makes them want to seek it yeah. out more because they're like, damn, dude, this guy is really out there getting it. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Well, and that's like one of the things that really sold me like on your live stuff is just like how. Dude, I can set that over here if you oh, get yeah. it off your yeah. lap. Yeah. I'm sorry. No, we're just gonna make you hold it the entire time <laughs> to let everybody know that you're a musician. Otherwise, <laughs> hey, you can't tell. How will we? It's hard in the hand. How will yeah. we know? Yeah. So, <laughs> it, going to see that show, like obviously, like I heard the record before, but like I hadn't seen you play since. And this is giving some backstory, I guess. But uh, we we kind of grew up going to the same like music camp together yeah um and that that like was probably the last time i saw you perform until the mm. laundry room yeah and dude like i just i remember seeing you on stage and being just like alex is so in his element on stage like you're a really great songwriter, but your performance like comes out so naturally yeah which is so different i think from kind of how people do things nowadays a lot especially just because like if you go to like a local house show it's like for a new you know like rap night you know like a bunch of soundcloud rapper like startup type people most of those guys even big like tyler the creator type people sing to their backing tracks and stuff like that yeah like sing to just the track yeah like what they put on spotify and just kind of like ad lib over it the whole time that is so annoying, dude. I hate that. Yeah. It, it I makes me... It. Like, I don't want to pay money to, to go watch you do Because then all you're doing... Yourself. Yeah, all you're yeah. doing is yeah. paying a lot. At that point, dude, I feel like I'm just paying to see a famous person jump around and yes. make noise. Like, that's, that's, not, that's not... Jump up, jump up, and get down. That's right. not what I want. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, Alex puts on a show. Yeah. Like a real one. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, I do still play the tracks because uh, I don't have my own band. Um, well, backtracks are one thing. Yeah, that's yeah. different. That's yeah. totally different. You're, you're still on there vocal. singing. Yeah. You're, not, are you, you're not singing over your own vocals, though, right? No. You're, you're no. Just, no. raw vocals. Yeah. Exactly. That's totally yeah. different. That's, yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, with that, like, I, a part of my reason for, for doing that is that it is, and I'm sure you guys being, being musicians yourself probably, probably know just how hard it is to get a group of musicians like oh, agree okay. on the same sound and, and learn the same songs and or play. show up to practice it's hard to find a group of musicians yeah, yeah. You're doing pretty yeah. Good if you yeah. Do that. yeah. so <laughs> you know I, I kept using that as an excuse and i was like eventually i need to get my own band together eventually I need to get, and, and i and you know i slowly realized that i was using that as like an excuse to, to, to push things off for mm -hmm. myself yeah um and so i was like okay i can do this alone i don't necessarily want to do it alone but i think i can make a pretty good show alone but then that's the challenge of like not being the SoundCloud rapper, right? right. Not just having it being tracks and me just being like, okay, yeah, even if I'm out of tune, my, my, my vocals are, are, are sounding through because I pre-recorded them and, and, and pitch correct and whatnot. So right. yeah, I, I spent a lot of work on like designing that set. Um, so there's, you know, none of the vocals are there. Um, it's me singing live. Um, every song I try to at least do one instrument. Um, and, yeah. and it's, Kind of fun that you, you, you see me jumping around through stage through all these all these different different segments. So there's there's times that I'm just singing, but there's a lot of times that I'm singing and I'm playing guitar. So I cut the guitar tracks as well. Um, there's a few songs that I'm, I'm doing keys on. Um, uh, there's a, a synthesizer solo that shows up. A saxophone solo. Yeah. See, man, yeah. that that's really cool though. I kind of yeah. like that. I like yeah. you know because you're you're using the most of the back track, right? So right. I mean, you acknowledge that. You don't necessarily want to have to do the backtrack, but since you do, find the silver lining and make it fun. I mean, right. that, that's pretty cool. Like yeah. one song you're on guitar, the next you're on keys. Yeah. You play saxophone. Yeah. That's a beautiful instrument. Yeah. I mean, that right, that alone is right. That's kick ass. Yeah. Yeah. That's actually always really fun because I um, I only use the saxophone for one song, 
and it's uh, it's the song that I end in my show on. Oh, really? Uh, yeah. Yeah. So I have it on stage, but um, I have a, a, a Trini flag over it because uh, that's where um, most of my family on my dad's side is from. Uh, so one, I'm giving homage. The Trini flag also shows up in my in my first record, and, mm-hmm. and I, I'm really into like symbolism. Um, but yeah, so you just kind of see this like anebish flag propped up on stage at right. the time and then I have like the grand reveal where I take the flag and I throw it up and it's a saxophone and I have a saxophone solo and it's just like how is that not cool? Yeah, you yeah, know? yeah. So cool. like even if I, I mess up the, the, the solo uh, it like it, it doesn't matter because I just pulled out a saxophone out of thin air. Yeah. Um, which is just really fun. It's um, just a good time. It's a good time yeah. to see you play. Yeah. Like, well, thank you. That would be yeah. my underlining message to like anyone who like is local enough to like want to come to one of your shows? Like, yeah, yeah. Well, so how often? How often are you playing then? Um, that's a that's a good question. So, I'd say like for my own stuff, I've probably played like a little over a dozen shows this this like this calendar year. That's, uh, that's pretty active. That's, yeah, that's pretty active. I mean, you're averaging um, once a month then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. but um. I'm also I'm, I'm touring with uh, with Brent Carmichael. Um, I'm bass and backing vocals for his band. In the summer, I think we we, we hit almost a hundred shows this summer. Damn, so, dude! So I'm doing that as well. But like, I'm also a writer, and, and I also kind of kind of have a, a sound that I, that I want to put out there. So I try to like you know do the stuff that I enjoy, where I'm just another member of the band, and, and yeah. I'm doing that, and, and, and I'm making money. But like, I'm also like kind of reaching for my passion project and yeah, man, that's awesome. arms at the same time. So between that, we're probably over a hundred so far. And that's funny, man. I, uh, I actually just finished La La Land and that's what that makes me think of. Yeah. Whenever, oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Cause Ryan Gosling starts playing for the new style jazz because it's like a oh, steady yeah. gig. He can play all the time. He's making money. Yeah. But then he's working towards his passion project. Right. Yeah. That's the, that's the role of the artist, like, yeah. 90% of the time is like, all right, go do the work so that you can, like, do the play, but you're kind of, you're, you've lucked out to where you kind of get to do both now. Yeah, yeah, which is awesome. So, um, I mean, that's, I think that's where a lot of people would like to find themselves. I mean, yeah, that's, that's the dream of the, the final ticket is, is to make sure that, like, it's continually sustaining, because right. I, w- I would love to just do oh, that and all of that, yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. And don't get me wrong, like playing with Brant is really fun. So like I'm I'm really enjoying that. Yeah. Um, and it's also nice to kinda like as an artist, especially like you've seen my show, I'm yeah. the only one up there on stage. Yeah. If something goes wrong, it's all guess who made the mistake. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, so it is really yeah. cool to be like, Oh dude, I have this rule that I fit in and I'm just worried about like these things. Yeah. And, like, you know. But that must be liberating. Yeah, yeah. Oh well, um, I you can tell I like, Go follow Alex Noriega Music um, on Instagram for sure, because you post a lot of really cool stuff from the tours and from um, yeah, like pictures and stuff just from y'all playing around yeah, town yeah. and stuff. And uh, you can see just how much fun you're having on stage. Like, yeah, I, I could tell just like from an outside perspective, like oh, you, you know, this is probably nice. Like yeah. to just worry about one instrument and not like then be your songs the whole set. You right. Know? Yeah. Um. Because even still, at that point, it's like, you know, if people don't like the music, it's like, well, I'm just the bass player, man. Right, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Um, to get a little fallback. Yeah. And, and there's that, like, added entertainment factor of, like, I love to move around and, like, dance on stage. Right. Whatnot. If you're singing, you can't do that all the time. No. You know, and, and I, I really try my hardest to do as much as possible when I'm you singing. You do a good job. <laughs> but when I'm only doing background vocals and I'm not doing background vocals on every, every song. Right. Dude. Um, yeah. I have this rule in my head that every stage that I get on, there's one end to the other, and at some point in the show, I'm, I'm going to walk all over that stage. Yeah. Which is just a lot of fun. Well, that's um, also what people pay for. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. That's the thing. A lot of people, I think, have forgotten that, like, there used to be, like, a craft to the performance element, for too. For sure. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's like you were saying. It's just so much, like, you know... Do this thing yeah. the whole time. Yeah. Like, yeah. Oh, it's our hype song. Like let's let's just make everyone bounce. I don't know. Right. We're not human basketballs. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I'm, and I'm conflicted on it too, man. Because like, it, talent's talent, right? So some people just get up there and play and sing and barely move a muscle and make it sound awesome. Right. But then yeah. you could go to a dive bar 
and the lead singer could be off key the whole time, but they're just getting it. Which yeah. one do you have more fun at? Yeah, you know? I mean, you definitely have to. Well, always the dive bar. Always the dive bar. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. True. You, you got to find that balance, man. You definitely, you definitely got to be interacting. And, so, and I feel like that's something I would struggle with personally because, like, yeah. I'm, I'm not, I'm not like a shy person by any means. No. But <laughs> unless I have a couple drinks in me, I'm not a big fan of making a fool in front of myself in front of thirty people, and that's what I would feel like. Yeah. Which is weird because when I watch other people do it. I'm like, this is yeah, awesome. Yeah, this guy's yeah. killing it, man. Right. This is great. And then yeah. I try to do it, and I'm like, oh, I'm shy. Dude. I'm <laughs> awkward. Yeah. I do these. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but but then I mean, it, you know, when we went to uh, Miss Kelly's that one night and did oh, karaoke, I mean, we were all over the place. I mean, we were yeah. acting like we were headlining a show, and it was a great time. We did as well as once. Been, though. Honestly. Yeah. <laughs> See, that's that's the fun part about music that I love is just like. You recognize other musicians, and like, even if you're not a musician, like, if you're just an enjoyer, a lover of music, yeah, you can pick it out kind of who has it and who doesn't. And like, when you go to a karaoke night like that, and like, one dude gets up there and he's like awesome, like, it doesn't matter to us because we're just like, yay, there's someone else here that doesn't suck, yeah, and we don't yeah. have to like strain to listen through, right. you know what I mean? Yeah. I, uh, I made a pit stop there last night, actually, and um, man, you don't make a pit stop at that. Place. I did, I did. I, I was only there for probably fifteen or twenty minutes. And you didn't sing? But dude, I was going to obviously, and I was gonna do "Sugar, We're Going Down." Again. Yeah, I had such a good time. The crowd, the crowd was great there last night, man. But I got up there and there was sixteen people ahead of me, and I was like, I am not waiting. It's like two hours. Yeah, I am, yeah, I am yeah. not waiting. He, I, I was doing the math in my head. I was like, okay, let's just say the average song is three minutes long. Yeah. Average. What, what I mean, sixteen times three, dude. Yeah. Yeah. Add no. And then you got the the in between. Yeah. Like, calling people up. Yeah. Easily, it would have been at least an hour long wait, and I was like, there is no way. Yeah. yeah. It's just not, not the move. Uh-uh. It, there's no good karaoke spots around here. Although... Um, Campus Pub. The Campus Pub... Oh, really? Yeah. Level oh. 3 and MJ. Level 3 does not count. Only I places I know of. Oh, that you know of. I thought you were saying that like Level 3 was a tier spot. No, 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 like, no, no, no. dude. No, it's a scary spot. It, it, dude, they, they're like... <laughs> yes. Their karaoke rooms, <laughs> it's, it, it, it's, it's intense, dude. Yeah, it, it is. And they, everybody in there is just like... Gone. Hammered. Three One, sheets, three yeah, oh, yeah. Just re everybody wants to get on the mic. Yeah. What I don't like about them though is they don't care either. No. They'll just let you be oh, yeah. an ass. But I, I don't like that it's dependent on how much money you send them, right? Yeah. So Kelly's it's five dollars. Everybody pays five dollars. There's no yeah. skip in the line. You can walk in level three and go, I'm gonna be next on the list, here's a fifteen dollar tip, and I'll put you at the top of the list. Yep. That gets annoying cool. after a while. It's yeah, because yeah, whoever has the most money ends up singing the most. There you go, man. Which Capitalism. Is not it. the person who sings the best. No, no, no. no, no. Oh, yeah. I was made for love. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's what you get from that guy. Yeah, yeah. but like monotone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was made Dude. for love and you. I did hear Maybe. some awful, <laughs> awful. They were having fun. Good for them, but yeah, it was yes. awful, dude. These two girls got up on stage, and of course, they start singing uh, "Love Story" by Taylor Swift. Whole bar erupts. Great song. Yeah. Whole bar erupts. Yes. Um, you know, but I was so close to the speakers that I couldn't really hear the audience. I just heard them the whole time, and I was like, "Ooh, dude, I love, I love the fact that they have the courage to do this." Yeah. It's always one of those like, "You're so brave." Oh, <laughs> look at you. Yeah. Look at I don't you. want to be mean, dude. It's, I'm not the best singer in the world. Like that's my biggest fear is getting on stage and like just not being able to sing in key for some reason. Like, there's a level of competency though that gets you past that fear. Well, <laughs> between that and confidence, but sometimes if you're not competent and too confident, you end up, yeah. True. Yes. Yeah. Which yeah. I think has happened to every musician. Oh, 100%. You get up there and you're like, oh, this is going to be great. And then 100%. you play it out and you're like, oh, I, I'm wrecked for the rest of the show. <laughs> I, I, <was laughs> I one note did it. <laughs> oh, yeah. And then you're thinking about it the whole time. The whole time. And you're in your head the whole time. Who like, heard that? Don't mess up again. Oh, I yeah, messed right, up again. Right. No. <laughs> I was playing earlier, so I'm going to play it so I wrote a song I played a hundred times, yeah. and for some reason, right in the middle of the chorus, I sang like fucking three octaves too high, and I was like, what was that? <laughs> <laughs> what in the world was that, man? 
<laughs> it was too high and flat somehow. <laughs> it was awesome. <laughs> Overshot and undershot. I, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I was like, mm, cool. You're going to delete that video. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's all on the playback. Too. Oh, 100%. Oh, no, I noticed it the second it happened. That's good. Yeah. Yeah. And then I was so in my head, I even messed up like the last verse. I was like, I'm going to push through just to finish this out. Yep. Last verse, I like forgot the words halfway through. I was like, yeah, I'm just going to stop. Yeah, this is dumb. I'm just, just, just going to shut this down. I had that when I was recording vocals the other day. I was doing a harmony, but I was doing a low harmony, and I never do low harmonies. Oh. Yeah, I was just trying to do it to like round out the chord that I was singing, and I'm telling you, it was one of those things where just like, I, I could not for the life of me, like, hear it through my headphones and sing it, and then listen to the playback and it sound the way that I think it sounded. Yeah. It doesn't make any sense, but it was one of those things where I just like, all right, take 15, I guess. And I would oh, sing yeah. it the way that I heard the harmony and like, I tracked it like that playback and it's like, that's not right. Yeah. That's just not right. It's the worst, dude. When you're, yeah. yeah, I get so frustrated, man. My, my dude, again, earlier I was playing and I, I'm probably the only pair, a musician would have noticed, but it was like my high E string was just out of tune enough to where it was just so blatantly obvious to me. Vocals were great on the track, everything was great, except for that one, one string. And I was yeah. like, I can't, I can't do anything with this. Mm -hmm. I can't do anything with this. There's yeah. no way. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> I can't sing low to save my life, though. I know, there's something about it. Like, low register is an anomaly for me. I yeah. just don't, I don't understand it. So, Alex, it's a basic question that we ask every single person that comes on this show that's a musician. You, I mean, you have a very unique sound, so I'm very curious. Uh-oh. We're going to keep going. Yeah. So, anyway, we ask everybody. It's a super basic question, but you do have a very unique sound, so I'm curious. What are the influences? What'd you grow up listening to? Who do you idolize right now? Um, what are you playing? Red so loves to ask this question. He's probably mad I stole it from him. No, I'm just glad that you asked it. Yeah. <laughs> I was watching Drake, Eminem. <laughs> Dude, hands down, Drake. Yeah. I love Drake personally. Yeah. No, he's he's awesome. No, uh, best rapper of all time certainly is uh, is Dr. Seuss. That yeah. was a huge influence. Hundred percent, dude. That's I respect yeah. that. Redfish. Yeah. Bluefish. That one captivated me. Dude. If you yeah. really look into the deeper meanings of that. Green eggs and ham. Oh. Um, whew, dude, I don't know if we were going there, man. Just, just a hard day, just yeah. headphones, and I'm just like, yes. Yeah, <laughs> uh, no, uh, I, I always struggle with this question because I, I listen to so much. Um, so growing up, uh, the first artist that I ever like actually dug into was Michael Jackson. Same, um, actually. That's so funny. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and, and, and still still a huge fan of his. Um, before I, I played music, I actually danced. Um, and, and he was a big influence of, of, of mine. So, so there was a lot of routines that, that I learned of his. I was a part of a dance team. I eventually became a dance captain and, like, and competed and all that. And, and that was really cool. Um, and I feel like that has always solidified that, like, okay, like, Regardless of what I'm writing, if it is sad, if it is happy, it has to like groove. Right. You know, like it, 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 it like the, the message needs to come across, but if you're making music, like, like the, the, there needs to be some sort of like good rhythm section and, and, and groove and sway and that like people can move to. Because uh, that's how I was introduced to music. Um, after that, when I first started playing instruments, um, I really dug into the White Stripes. Uh, and awesome, so I'm, I'm still a really big uh, Jack White fanboy. Um, he's 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 pretty dope. Um, he has also done like a wide range of things. Right. Uh, and I feel like oh, that yeah. is constantly me, where I can't stick in one genre. He's definitely someone who's not scared to step out of his comfort zone and really. Yeah. Uh, no, for sure. Uh, also, just like genre, he he's proven time and time again, genre does not matter. Cause like you yeah. could you could call him like the blues rock guy and you wouldn't be wrong to say that but he is so far from how like tunnel visioned like the black keys were yeah or like got to yeah because like if you listen to a black keys record you know immediately like this is the black keys it's just the production sounds like it yeah you know and you just know but like the one person who does not like the black keys <laughs> well i don't like that about them I mean, it's not that I don't like their old stuff, but they have hits. You know, that's it. Yeah. The Black Keys have a couple of good records, and then some records that have some singles on them. And that's kind of their whole career. 
Yeah. And that's fine. But they did the same tired trick every time. And that's why they got worn out so quick. Jack White, he might sing the way he sings, but he's always going to come up with an interesting new way to deliver that. Yeah. Um, yeah. What was his other big band? The Rock and the Racketeers. 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 So are you more of a White Stripes or Rack and Tears tours? Rack and tours? Rack and tours? Why can't I say that? Rack on tours. I'm yeah. saying like tears. <laughs> it's a Rack and Tears. <laughs> um, You're making it French Canadian. <laughs> I, I've like he's he's an artist that like, I deep dived into. So I really enjoyed the White Stripes and I listened to White Stripes first, but then after that, like uh, I listened to the Rack and Tours for for a while. Uh, he was also part of the Dead Weather that, that I really enjoyed, and he has this cool. old stuff. Uh, he did a, a country record collaboration with Loretta Lynn. Oh, that, was, that is awesome! Really I didn't know yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, highly recommend. He he's on a Beyonce's Lemonade record. Yep. Which is wild. That. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, which um, you know, not to upset the Beehive, but anytime I meet someone who's who's a really big Beyonce fan, I'm like, hey, you know how much you love Lemonade? Yeah. This this rock star is on there. Yeah. Like, um, which which is just so cool that he just. Does so much. Look at you out there, yeah. just doing the work for for Jack White, just shouting him out, yeah. just letting everybody yeah. know. Hey, I just run a good guy uh, for Jack Antonoff all the time. I I push that boy Fair. as much as I can. Yeah, <laughs> um, he doesn't need any help. Neither does Jack White, though. Yeah, that's that's what I like about him that, that he just does so much different stuff, and it all at least to me sounds really good. Yeah, it's and, awesome. and that's what I want to do. The, the, I never want to. Pigeonhole myself, dude. I get it, man. Yeah. Every song I write, I feel like sounds different from the other. It may, it kind of worries me because, like, I feel like I'm genreless as well. Like, I feel yeah. like I, did, like, you've heard all my music. Yeah. Like, none of it is cohesive to the other. I feel mm. it's cohesive in the fact that you play on acoustic guitar. That's Correct. About I am, I am an acoustic player. Yeah. I don't, yeah. I don't do like electric. I wish I, I wish I did. I wish I would have learned electric when I was younger and really taken it serious, but I just didn't. Mm. You still can. Um, I know I still can, yeah, dude. Cool. I just don't have. Yeah. Fair. <laughs> it's a me problem for yeah. sure. Yeah. yeah. One of these days, I'm just gonna give you an electric guitar. I have one. Like, okay, I'm just gonna give you an amp to like noodle on, and we'll we'll see. Um, it's I would really have to learn fret fluency at that point, and that scares the shit out of me. Because <laughs> you really gotta know your fret if you're like actually gonna play. Like, I feel like you can't you can't just chord. You can't just rely on chords on an electric. Yeah. It's no. not the same as no. an acoustic. But but it's still liberating once you. Do you unlock that and, yeah. and, you, and you figured that out and you get that literacy because then you're like, dude, I can do anything. Right yeah, now. I am yeah. unstoppable. Yeah. yeah. Here, yeah. give me, let me, let me show you. This will, this will. So, real quick, you know, you know what song of uh, Jack White's constantly gets stuck in my head is the. I'm thinking about my doorbell when you're gonna ring it, when you're gonna yeah, ring yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, no, that one's great. Between it's that and the. Little ghost, little ghost, when I'm scared of the most, can you scare me up a little bit of love? I yeah. love that song, dude. That's such a good one. This will um, this will show you an intro to fret fluency. All right. Okay. So this is simple. Okay. Make it real is simple. A scale. So think about your major scale. I don't know any of my scales. I well, swear to God. Yes, you do. <laughs> no, I don't. I mean, I've heard it. I know what you're playing, but. Right. So that's an eight, an eight note scale, eight uh -huh. tones. Break them down into numbers. That's the Nashville number system. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So, your one and your eight are the same. So, that's your octave. Everything in between are harmonies. So you have perfect four, minor third, fifth, root. Then you have your seventh and your sixth, which are kind of your odd tones in there. Now here's the cool part. In every scale, Every note name has to be present, and you can either have sharps or flats, right? But depending on what mode you're in, like for instance a sharp 4 or a flat 5, with that as your root, would change what mode you're in. So here's what I'm saying. There are no wrong notes. You literally just have to hear whether you're a half step away or a whole step away from yeah. the right note. Yeah. And that pretty much will unlock everything for you, because you could go... playing that, it's fine. Yeah. Even though what I played was uh, a one, a four, a three, and then like 
what would be I like a minor do. six. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I mean, you uh, you lost me at the very beginning of all of that. I've been playing guitar since I was 14, and I don't know what I'm doing. I, okay, I just play, dude. I just write music, and I just play. Can also I can't do... read tabs. I can't read music. I can read a chord. Like, if I'm, like, on ultimate guitar, like, I can read the chords that I'm yeah. supposed to play and kind of figure it out. And, like, other than that, dude, I, I have, I, I don't. Well, look, no at, at, look at this. This is, this is a riff I wrote that just like breaks like music theory basically, but it sounds right. Oh wow, that's a big bold claim there, bud. I mean... What am I playing, a fucking spy game from the 90s? <laughs> <laughs> that is, it's already a song, Brad. That's with the, the little car, and you, you you're on the, you're in the little car I, on the. I, are you talking about Spy Hunter? Yes. Okay. <laughs> That's a song from Spy it Hunter. It sounds like it reminds me of Spy Hunter. So it's kind of an E, but it's kind of an A. It's kind of blues because it's got the blue note. Yeah. But it's also just like. Completely chromatic everywhere else. Yeah, yeah. it's making me anxious. It's a, it's a weird, it's a weird riff. My point though is, you feel like I'm like something bad's gonna happen. Like, you can it, pretty it, much play anything, and as long as you have the confidence to, to play it off, it, it can work. Yeah, is, is my point. Yeah, um, may I? Please demonstrate so, away. Like, one of going back to influences. Um, when I first learned guitar, um, I guess I was a really big nerd. And, and I started learning jazz first. Wow. And so that's that's, that's intense. constantly. Well, my thought was after I like kind of got into it, I was like, even if I can be like a mediocre jazz artist, then like that I can probably be like a pretty good rocker. Yeah. Jazz is just like it's so hard. Yeah. Man. But um, I was um, I was playing for the Murfreesboro Youth Jazz Orchestra, and um, the director there had this idea where like. You know, if you know, there's there's big theory heads in jazz and whatnot, but he was like, really, if if you learn nothing else, know that there's like tension and release, right? So if you're in something major, right, and you go to that root note, that's that's going to feel comfortable. If you go to the fourth, it's still going to feel comfortable. But you can kind of play with that. So if I'm just Right, but that's still a key. So if I resolve it, and that feels comfortable again, and you can even go out a key. So yeah. you can always bridge it back. you know that like okay here's here's my home base like, yeah. it doesn't matter that this is out of key because if I get back to it then, then yeah and, it and, and that helps me a lot where I just like okay yeah I should practice skills some but also like I should just I should know where where home base is as yeah. far as the scales maybe I just yeah. start practicing then, scales every day yeah yeah scales <clears throat> Scales but then also break them. You know? Yeah, breaking the scales yeah. is important too. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It's like you want to know the rules, but you also want to know the rules so that you know where to push outside the rules. See, yeah. my I think my problem was when I was learning how to play guitar. So I I, I did the lessons thing when I was probably twelve years old, okay. and I I got frustrated with the teacher because like. I, I, dude, I just, I get frustrated really easy when I'm not good at something. It's a problem. I've always yeah. been that way. <laughs> and so I was playing, um, I think he was trying to teach me like inner Sandman or something, yeah. you know, he's like 60. 
And I, I played a wrong note and it sounded funny and he laughed and I know shit, dude. I got up and I was like, I'm done. I'm done. And I quit guitar <laughs> lessons. Right there, dude. I quit guitar lessons. And so two years later. So has come out. Right. I, yeah. yeah. So two years later, around 14, I was like, well, I do really want to know how to play guitar, though. I want to know more than just free and, you know, just like your standard, yeah. like, no. I, I need to know more than that. Yeah. And so, yeah, I, everything I learned was from YouTube. And it, it really started with just, okay, well, I want to learn how to play this one song. And so then I would yeah. learn how to cover that song. And then I would do the next one. And then I would do the next one. And honest to God, I would say it wasn't until probably, I'm 28. I mean, it probably wasn't until I was like 22 that I started actually trying to write music. Mm. And that's a lot harder to do when you don't know what the hell's going on. Yeah. Like, yeah. Even the stuff, I play like, I don't, I, I don't play anything like too complex, but like even my more complex, the like, that's not complex necessarily, but I, I have it no hurts idea. my brain. I don't know why. I do, because it's chord shapes I don't play ever. I have no idea how yeah. it came out. I just did it. I don't, I just, yeah. I have no, I don't even know what some of those it's notes your, are. It's your ear. Right. You're just but I can't hear him play stuff. I wish I had that ability too. Yeah. <laughs> I'm an anomaly, not a good one though. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. It's okay. Um, so, before we make you play a song for, yes. our, for our first ever Just After Midnight Yeah, that's gonna be pretty cool, yeah. Yeah. Um, can you uh, walk us through a little bit more of what tour life was like for you? Uh, cause that seems yeah, to be sure. like a huge accomplishment for like, you know, recent stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I, I toured this summer, but I also toured briefly right before with, uh, with Jason McKinney. Um, and, and that was a lot of fun. Shouts out Jason. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, sad, unfortunately he's, he's retiring. Uh, yeah. So I, I, I hopped on the train. Right as it was well, about yeah. to arrive, I guess. Yeah, uh, which, which sucks. But uh, no, that was that was fun uh, getting getting to do lead guitar because that's that's one of my biggest passions, really. Yeah. Um, and I can actually use all the copious amounts of theory, but it doesn't matter most of the time. Right. But like in that instance of like, especially like the the style that he does, like yeah, really got to experiment. So that was fun. Um, really cool to like once again just play the role of like you know this is my one part yeah. you know i'm doing i'm doing guitar cool yeah. um you know there's a singer here he's singing there's a drummer here he's playing drums there's keys i'm not worried about all of that i'm not even worried about looking at the audience all the time because yeah. because I'm, I'm i'm the guitar player and i and i can kind of exist in my world and like walk the stage and, and just do my thing so that was really cool and then dude just quite fortunate that um you know, Jason talked to me and he said, you know, at, at the end of this year, you know, 99% sure that, that, that I'm, I'm going to retire, that, that I'm really not going to be playing anymore. Um, and so I was like, okay, cool, fair enough. Um, it, was, it was fun while it lasted, um, but here I am back doing the gig, gig thing again, yeah. trying to look for another gig rather. Um, and I was a little bit down on it because, you know, I was just like, oh, man, I thought this was going like, to really like... Yeah. Bridge me out and, 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 and kind of elevate my career. Um, and it just so happened that right as Jason was like, yeah, retiring, um, Ethan, uh, which you know Ethan, yeah. uh, Ethan reached out to me because he's... Drummer Ethan. Yeah, he, he's <laughs> playing for, for Brant Carmichael. Uh, and he reaches out and he said, hey, um, our last bass player just quit on us. Do you want to audition for a spot? And this was in like a, a week and a half, two weeks span. Wow. Yeah. So it's crazy just like, how that kind of stuff lines yeah. up. Yeah. Sometimes. So I was like jobless and I was just like, man, okay, well, I want another music gig because the, the nine to five thing is uh, soul crushing. Thinking uh, about on tap. Absolutely. Um, yes. Um, we know very well. <laughs> right. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, audition for that. That was intense. Um, Brant sent me 60 songs. Yo, that's a lot to learn. Um, as, as his catalog, and was just like, hey, learn as many of them as you can. Um, but, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll probably run through, I think we ran through like seven or eight yeah. for the audition, which is, which is a lot more manageable, but it was yeah. very daunting. And then our catalog now is like, Realistically, like over a hundred songs. Yeah, yeah, it would have been a lot easier if he would have been like, "Hey, these are the seven or eight songs I want." You know, not yeah. here's sixty, learn all of them, and then I'm gonna cherry pick which ones. Yeah, I'm gonna throw at you. yeah. Hey, well, I mean, good stress test. Yeah, I mean, I'm glad that he told me that because it, it really like 
bass isn't my comfort zone, right? I'm a, I'm a guitar player. I think I'm a pretty good bass player too, but like it's not my element. Yeah. Um, and so that kind of like mega inspired me of like, okay, well, I got this opportunity for this gig. Let's bring Am I going to complain or am I yeah. just going to, you know, woodshed and, and practice for it and, and do what I need to do to get like through all these songs? What was the time frame you had? How long did you have to try to crank this out? I think it was a week. Dude, that is yeah. intense, buddy. That's, yeah. That is, I'm going to sit But that is the session hours. life, okay? Yeah. <laughs> because the first gig I played with Jason, I get four days to learn a three hour set. So, you know. That's, that's a lot better. Yeah. 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 Um, it's not great still. I mean, it really shows, like, it really shows the dedication to your craft that you have, though. I mean, it really shows how motivated you are to also, make this a yeah. full time gig. Like, yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, just professionalism, too. That, I, it's, it's the classic, like, Rick Beato joke at this point, but it's so true, which is just like before there was Pro Tools, there were pros. Yeah, that's true. I yes. really, I hope yeah. that that comes back a little bit more. Yeah. I see I, it a little bit with this new generation, <laughs> like... For sure. You get these, like... We're gonna do it the vintage way. <laughs> yeah. I, it's yeah. kind of true, though, because what you have a lot... This is the three type of musicians I see on Instagram. Singer-songwriters, who kind of do more along the lines of what you do. Takes talent, songwriting ability, chops to play. Yeah. There are the Tim Henson wannabes that just play every note on the guitar neck humanly possible in like 168 BPM. Yes. Just for just endless rip reels. Just ripping. Just ripping for. I hate that. I do too. So much. Especially the heavy metal ones. Yeah. And then the last one is this 60s, 70s, like nostalgic people who are just like. Let's put a tape effect on everything and crank up the saturation as much as possible. So yeah. it's all just kind of like chorus and reverb and like tape hiss and very blown out like bass end of things. Um, right. So, I mean, I think it's interesting, I guess, that like we've come from like a 2000s to 2010 decade of like really pop dominant mm -hmm. and really like rap R&B dominant. And I think we're kind of going... I know people say like there was a big surge of like indie from like you know 2008 all the way through to like 2016 2017 and that's true but I think what we're seeing on on the post side of that is like a much more mellow like music focused thing that's happening right now where it's not like I think I think musicians and I think a lot of listeners are interested in having like musical pieces again. Yeah. Um, hits that, that actually like function as something, not just like a, a regurgitation of like a top ten, you know, for yeah, cookie cutter stuff. Right. right. Yeah. yeah. Like it's not dance pop anymore. It's kinda of shifted yeah. away from that a little bit, which which is good. I think it's it's refreshing. Yeah, and it's opening up, you know, an audience for people like like what you do for your solo music a lot especially and, and you know kind of just like where musicians want to feel comfortable again because i feel like we haven't really had that since like the 80s 80s or 90s you know mm. yeah we've had a big surge of just like everyone loves music everybody wants to hear like the newest coolest best thing like i have so many friends right now that are musicians yeah we're just like you know even not musicians but producers you know make stuff in their bedroom like chop and sample and like you know just make beats and stuff like that but you know four or five of them will get together and like make something and it's like okay cool like you know this is this is kind of the thing like this is how it's supposed to be like it's, it's right. nice to see that coming back a little bit yeah um it's it's so exciting to like kind of live in that dynamic where i feel like growing up and playing and, and now I'm kind of happy for it because I have better chops than I did yeah. when I was growing up but yeah. like growing up and like the, the the musicians of like when we were like 12 to 17 yeah. and like our, our age group weren't focused on that but now no. it seems like they they are and yeah. so like, like one of the things that um I'm, I'm planning on doing now is is, is collaborating with, with, with a lot more artists um and, and, and co-writing and whatnot and I actually feel comfortable enough, both in my craft and in others' craft, that to be able to do that, that can actually do like yeah, we can actually do that and and, and get something done. Yeah. Um, but so sorry you know, to to actually answer your, your your question about tour. So I got the tour right, but yeah, it, it was it was absolutely amazing. We we mainly toured the, the Midwest, um, but again, it's a good place for it right now. Probably played yeah almost a hundred shows if, if I had to guess. What was your favorite place? 
Oh. Good ooh, question. Ooh, that's actually yeah, man. Um, I don't know anything about the Midwest. Yeah, I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna delay that so I can come back to it. Okay, absolutely. Um, <laughs> but it was cool that like, so Brant owns his own tour bus. Nice. Um, and like we weren't always on, 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 on the tour bus, you know, that's, it, I kind of realized more and more as I entered the industry, there was a lot of smoke and mirrors, right? Like oh, I was yes. playing a smaller gig, it, it makes no sense to, to, to pay for gas. No, it's right? just insane. Yeah, 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 like like let's truck it for the small stuff, but for the big stuff, if we're on the road for, for long periods of time, yeah. it's cool that we weren't even renting something, that we had something yeah, that, so right. that he owns, that we, you know, that like my name is, is, is on the bunk now, and, and like this is my spot, and this is where we can chill out, and yeah. we have somewhere constantly where we can kind of just be ourselves and then go from show to show. Um, That's the fun stuff. The best, the best place I've played. Or even just favorite city. Yeah. Man, I don't, I, I really don't know. Cause it's, we've played at so many different venues that have all been really fun. We played quite a few festivals. Uh, we played a few fairs. I bet the festival would be fun. Yeah, yeah. Um, and we've also played some dive bars that were surprisingly packed and very entertaining. Yeah. So, I'll say Cedar Point was probably the most unique experience. That was really cool. We had a residency gig there. That nice. We had to play six shows a day. Oh, good <laughs> lord. Yeah. yeah. Short shows. Um, right. About, you know, 25 minutes to a half hour. That, okay, but that, that's... Go all throughout the day. Um, but that was cool because in exchange we got like free access to the park. Uh, that's all, all of our meals were covered for. Yeah. Uh, they gave us hotels, so that's yeah. awesome. Didn't have to worry about any expenses at all. It right. was just like, hey, show up and play music and get paid for it. How cool! That's all I've ever wanted. Yeah, right. literally. Like, oh yes. my gosh. Yes. Um, How much did you change the sets between those? So we called that our band camp, and we did that twice, right? Yeah. Once towards the beginning of tour, and once towards the end. And we would we probably exhausted like everything in like our actual working catalog because we were like, okay, twenty five minutes. It's not like people are here just to come and see music. They're at the park. Right. They're eating food. They're going on rides. Yeah, cool. Not saying that there's there's no stakes, but but the stakes are a lot lower than you know you playing the festival and it's like everyone is is here to like see yeah. you. Yeah. Uh, so we we use that opportunity to be yeah. like, hey, let's practice this. Hey, this feels kind of weird. Hey, let's try that a little bit faster. It's you know so, cool. so that was cool. Yeah. And um, we we actually don't use a, a set list. He just he just calls them out. Yep. Yeah. Yep. That's, Which is really cool. It is fun. And by the end of tour, I, it's. It's cool how musicians operate, right? right? Like most of the time, I could like I could feel it. Like he, he wouldn't say anything. I would just be like, "We're going to this. We're probably going to go to this. Yeah. We're probably either going to go to this or, or this." Yeah. And there were some moments that like you know he wouldn't even call anything out, and we would just land. And I'm just like, I don't know how this is happening, but I know if I think about it too much, I'm gonna I'm gonna screw up. Right. So let's not think about it. Yeah. Let's just enjoy just it, it and be happy that it happened, yeah. and then keep playing. Yeah. Yeah. That's um, that's a hard one too. Yeah, because that can get in your head. Right, something too perfect on on stage can get in your head just as easily as a yeah. Because then you're like, yeah. I don't want to mess this up. This right. is too good. That yeah, happened to me. Too good. I remember my favorite show that I ever played at Good Old Carpe. It was just one of my like little solo shows back in the day, just me and an acoustic, and I did the Joe Cocker version of "Little Help of My Friends," like the Beatles song, mm. and. I just I went for this like big scream and it came out perfect and I was like bet that was the hard part of the run flat the whole way down oh. <laughs> <laughs> but, but the peak note was great uh, and it was it was one of those things like in a split second it was like oh because it was so perfect I had too much confidence right you had to make up for it all right yeah. Yeah, I just fell off completely. Um. That actually reminds me, my favorite artist of all time, um, and, and I guess this, this can end up end, end up the, the influence question that I actually never answered, uh, <laughs> is St. Vincent. She is a, a lead guitarist and, and an indie uh, songwriter, and, and she's just, just fucking badass, man. I'll have to check um, her out because I yes. St. Vincent's awesome. Um, I will say in general, just the way that the industry is, it is very hard for uh, a woman to do anything but be a singer-songwriter. Mm. Yeah. Uh, and it is probably one of the hardest things for them to, to be a lead guitar player. 
Um, and so yeah. immediately anyone that I see who, who who's a woman who is playing lead guitar, I'm just like, dude, you, you you've worked so hard to, to, to get where you are. Yeah. Because the average musician has to work so hard and the industry is pitted against those people in, in particular. So if they, they've yeah. made it, they have made it. Um, yeah, she, she talks about this thing where it's like, you know, where she's saying like, I struggle to like, sometimes enjoy things in the moment. Cause like, sometimes I'm playing really well and, and I, I'm having a good show and everything is just fitting together. And it's like, you know, the, the human tendency is like, you want to stop and just like feel it and admire it, right? Yeah. But because the show is a show and it's ongoing, sometimes if you get too in your head about that, like you're, you're in that moment and then it falls apart. Yeah. So it's just constantly this like very, fragile thing that you are you're playing with both the audience and yourself of like okay i gotta be like focused enough and driven enough and in the moment enough to like reach this feeling but not yeah. so into it that i'm like drinking my own juice so robotic to speak. yeah, right. yeah, and, yeah. And the, 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 that you fall out of try it. to find the balance of you because yeah. if, if people are coming and watching you you are the moment yeah. for them they are trying to live in the moment of experiencing you but then you're also trying yeah. to find a way to live in that very yeah. same moment yeah exactly yeah and oh. that is so difficult so like your example of yeah. getting that no there's been several times that i've done that where i'm just like dude this is so like yes yeah. and then and then i'm 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 zoning out too much, and then I'm you're like, late, and then, and then I mess up, yeah. and I'm like, "Well, it was really cool." Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I just kicked myself. Yeah, out. I hope no one else noticed that. Uh, uh, we recover. Gosh, it's uh, so true. <laughs> Especially if you're playing with a click or something like that. Yes, I remember that happened a lot when I was playing at church. Like, yeah, I'd nail like a little bass run or something, and be like, "Okay, cool, diamond," and then I'm not counting with the click, and all of a sudden everyone's back in, and I'm not. <laughs> so it's like. Coming in on the two this time. <laughs> cool. um, um, yeah, yeah, bass especially going to the click. That is so cool. paramount. So important. Yeah, yeah. And if you, you don't have a click, the kick, that has to be your guide for mm -hmm. everything. If he drags, you drag. Yeah. 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 You know they mic up like football players and stuff. And yeah. Tell them on the I want to mic up a bassist or something. <laughs> like, <you> know, exactly. <laughs> what chord are we playing? <laughs> Where are you? <laughs> I heard some big bands actually do have like a talkback feature. Which oh yeah, is so wild. Uh, they do a life point all the time. Really? Yeah, the, the keyboard oh. player has a talkback on stage. Oh, huh. yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, yeah. There's a couple, a couple places around here that do that. I've noticed, like, ah, um, uh, there was some, there was some. I, it, it wasn't like a band that anyone would know, but it was, uh, it was a venue that I went to recently. I can't remember the name of it. It was local, and I, I saw the, the lead singer like talking to a mic that was like faced away from the drum kit but like standing right in front of the drum kit pretty much every time that's a talk back mic you just, yeah. <laughs> you just turn around and like shut up you sound terrible and then you turn around and smile it's fine <laughs> it, 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 it happens yeah. Yeah. Right, it's, it's a good tool if you can if you can you gotta have a, a whole setup for, yeah. for that to work but man it's neat when it's possible for sure um uh, do you want to do you want to play a song now? Um, yeah, sure, why not? Let's do yeah. it. Yeah! Yeah. There it is. You yeah. gotta, you gotta, sometimes you just gotta not think about it. Throw, uh, throw yourself into the fire. If only I had an electric setup for you. <laughs> you know, I mean, I enjoy both. At some point, we're gonna figure out, like, a nice way to record. So when we have people, like, musicians on, we can do, like, a little... Yeah, bit. like, jam or something. I think it'd be cool to devote, like, a corner and make it, like, a cool little mini stage. Yeah. Just big enough for, like, one person. Two one one person. Like, a little four-by-four, four, hang up, like, a... That would be so... A cool. burgundy felt. We should do that. Just, like, make it, like, a little comedy set stage. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, my gosh. Yes. I'm sorry. I'm facing a decision. Um... <laughs> yeah, we kind of dropped this on you. you you don't. You it's didn't good. have any time to plan it's what good. song you want to play. I, lo I love doing this. Dude, I just play wagon wheel. I like being nervous. <laughs> uh, actually, can I play something really stupid first, and then I'll actually play a song? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, Work those nerves out, man. Uh, I like to. Uh, as you heard earlier, like all the all the jokes that you can make with guitar, right? The <laughs> yeah. It's good. I love uh, how you ghost note that too, like, yeah. <laughs> just for fun. Yeah, yeah, because why, why make anything easy? Yeah, no, um, no, so, uh, 
with a bunch of my like music buddies and like even my dad, I'll say like, hey, you want to hear the hardest song that I know? And of course, uh, the other resounding is like, okay, yeah, sure, right? And so I go. So I was uh, I was hanging out with um, with a couple friends. It was it was very late at night. There was a bit of alcohol involved. Yes, uh, and as there and, would and need and to be. Miraculously, <laughs> they're, they're, like my guitar just you know ended up in my hand. You know, I, I don't know how that happens. It wow, just, it doesn't you know, need to be that. Yeah, way. yeah. There's a whiskey shot, and suddenly I'm just like. Um, yeah, but yeah. So I was just like, oh, dude. I feel like you should add a banjo back in your. Yeah, album. right. I could like. I could definitely overcomplicate Mary Had a Little Lamb right <laughs> and everyone in the room would just be like, what the fuck are you doing? But that's fun, right? You should do a whole set of this. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Mary Had a Little Lamb, Wheels on the Bus, <laughs> Twinkle Twinkle Star. <laughs> uh, I bet people would love that, actually. Yeah, yeah. No, just, it's, it's definitely me material at the very least. Oh, yeah. In um, the best way possible. Yeah. That's great. But yes, so I was, I was bored and slightly inebriated, and I was just like, you know what? Yeah, let's... <laughs> Let's take something very easy. It's when the best stuff happens. Just, really. Yeah. That was, that was um, cool. Do you think I should play the new song or do you think I should play Mary Mother to the World? Do you love that song? Yeah. Depends on if you want to plug the new stuff yet or if you want to plug what you got out already. <sighs> you want to give them a little teaser? I just don't know what I'm going to be releasing yet. That's the thing. It's like, oh, uh, should I do it now and then, you know, it doesn't come out for like four or five months? Yeah. Well, I love, I love Mary Mother. Great song. Yeah, why not? Let's let's keep that. All right. That's that's not very mother to the world. That's full song. Yeah, that's a good one too, though. <laughs> Bye. 
campus uh, at MTSU. This will not um, be out by then. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah that's, that's awkward. Yeah, <laughs> totally wasn't thinking of that. Um, so I played a show last week at campus. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, retroactively, you know, show up if you're a time traveler, be real and, True. and, and let us know that you saw this. That'd be pretty dope. Tesla, we're looking at you. Uh, yeah. <laughs> You'll know because they'll have an iPhone in the picture. <laughs> <laughs> and a sweater. Yeah. A nice hipster sweater. Um, but yeah, no. So, so I'm playing playing Rocktoberfest uh, to tomorrow that, that I'm excited for. Um, what time is the show? It is. It starts at six p.m. I think I go on like an hour and a half after that. Nice. Okay. Uh, which is pretty cool. Yeah. You have to be a student to go. No, no. no it's, it's open and it's free. So if you're interested and you want to hear me with an electric guitar, I guess I'm just plugging for you guys. Yeah. You show up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, uh, <laughs> other than that, though. Um, uh, me and Brant, we, we're, we're, we're going back on the road this upcoming weekend, and we have a few more shows that are, that are taking us out through the year. This is kind of like our off-season summer is, is primarily when we play, but, but we still have a few things coming up, which is cool. And then uh, I, I'm very, very, very close on uh, finishing this record. I'm, I'm 10 songs uh, written, recorded, and, and mixed. Um, so that is that is super exciting. Yes. I'm just trying to figure Can't wait for that. the last couple songs that, that, that makes it feel like it's a complete piece. Yep. I don't yeah. know how I'm going to disperse that yet. Um, still still thinking if I want like one big group or, or maybe split it into a few EPs or whatnot. But yeah. that's coming pretty soon. So that's awesome. Uh, if you want to follow, uh, my name is Alex Noriega. Uh, my Instagram is alex.noriega.music. Um, maybe spell the last name for me. Yeah, sure. Can I guess? Um, this is fun, yeah. Do it. Nor Noriega? Yeah. N O R. Mm hmm. I. Ooh, say it all goes high. Noriega. <laughs> yeah. N O R E I G A. Yeah. Um, -E check me out in general. I'm posting a lot of stuff. Like yep. uh, Red said, I, I post a lot about the tour. Yep. Uh, I actually just got done making like a compilation video of just like the random shenanigans and nice. that we were doing. So I'll be posting that too. So if you want to see and like an insider's view of what it looks like to yeah. be trapped on a bus and, and go crazy and play. That's that awesome, music. man. Yeah. Um, Your TikTok was also pretty great for a while there. Yeah. Still yeah, on TikTok? yeah. So, um, well, I know you went on tour. So not yeah. to get political, but, uh, -huh. uh, uh the, the, our great governor put a Wi-Fi ban on TikTok on campus. Oh, hilarious. What? I yes. did not realize yeah, that. Yeah, so if you are on what? campus and you're using campus Wi-Fi, you cannot access TikTok. 
Dude, that is crazy how they can do that. Yeah, I was just like, dude, I, why don't you just use cellular? This doesn't feel American. Um, <laughs> right? Um, <laughs> yeah, literally. <laughs> like, why are you censoring my what? That's crazy. Um, yeah, no, so I was using cellular, but like, I just, I, I got frustrated with it for a while. I feel you. So I've made a bunch of TikToks, um, and like the, the band recap that I told you about is going to be on TikTok cool. as well. Uh, same thing, <laughs> alex.noriega.music. Yeah. Um, but yeah, no, I just, I, um, I pouted. For a couple months. I get it. I get it. Where I'm I just it. like, this is kind of dumb. And Dude, it's that so information much is new to me and mind blowing at the yeah. same time. That yeah. is like absolutely yeah. insane. That's just it feels. I don't think anybody should take TikTok serious enough to. I'm like, I'm kind of angry about this. I don't even go to school there, dude. Yeah, right. I'm like, yeah. why are people not picketing in the streets? Yeah. <laughs> like, so like, I mean, what really sucks is that like I live on campus too, right? Right. So it doesn't. I mean. Okay, probably shouldn't be on your phone super super much when you're like studying and, and doing class and whatnot. Yeah. Yeah, but like the fact that like okay, I do class, but I also work there, but then I also live there. What if you use like a VPN? Can you get around the? Can you get around it? Ooh. Not and still be on the Wi-Fi. Oh because yeah, because the it's from they're coded network. in their yeah. Wi-Fi. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. so wild to me. Yeah. yeah. TikTok, I mean, TikTok if used properly, which I don't know if there is a proper way, it's a good tool for musicians. Yeah. 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 Um, I mean, that's, that's a whole reason why I got on. Um, yeah. But yeah, now I, I plan to be, I'm, I'm posting a bunch of, I'm stockpiling my videos while, while I take my, my, my cloudy session. But, good, good. Yeah. They'll come back. Yeah, of course. Well, then you'll have a good catalog. It'll be kind of stress-free. You can just release them as you go instead yes. of like, oh, I've got to get this recorded. I've got to get, I can do that. It's busy, man. There's yeah. There's something going on. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, so while I haven't been posting, that was my goal of like, let's try to make one a week. Yeah. And if I can make one a week and whenever I get back on, you know. Listen, dude, if there's anybody. Like hard and whatnot, you know, I can yeah. post and it looks like that, you know, that, I, that I'm making stuff. I didn't make it, but I made it, you know. Right. If um, there's anybody that drops the ball on recording videos when they're supposed to, it's these two guys. <laughs> <laughs> you yeah. guys know the struggle for sure. Right, yeah. yeah. Good yeah. schedule. Yeah. Um, it's a lot we're good with the podcast for the most part, yeah. but the solo videos, dude, we... We're bad at that. Yeah, we are bad. We're, we'll get better. Yeah. Will we? Yeah. <laughs> I fear. <laughs> sure. Yeah. Why not? Um, anyway, well, that has been our time for... Today? On... Oh! <laughs> <laughs> usually, go, usually you go, this is Ben, and so that's my lead-in. <laughs> um, I thought your name was Dalton, not Ben. Yeah. <laughs> So this has been just after midnight. Goodbye. Nice. Thank you guys. Absolutely. Dude, dude thanks for coming on. We yeah. have got to have you back again. Yeah, yeah. Man, this was great, dude. This was after midnight.